AB referencing to a reference track is an extremely powerful tool whether you're mixing, mastering or producing. It's always a good idea to check your work compared to something else. And Cubase Pro allows you to do AB referencing without any complex routing or the cable hassle or any extra plugins required. Let me show you how to set it up. Here I have a very typical scenario where I might want to do A-B referencing and it would be very beneficial. So let's say I want to master this track and I want to start adding processing, I want to start adding EQs, I want to start adding compressors and all these things but I want to have a reference track, maybe a commercial mix or maybe a master that my client likes and they want me to approach that sound. A-B referencing can be extremely useful in these scenarios. So let's say in this case, I wanted to go back and forth between the mastered version and the non-mastered version, the mix. How can I do this? So now I'm going to show you all the steps that you need to take in order to do A-B referencing in Cubase. Everything that I'm going to show you applies to Cubase Pro because we're going to use the control room to do this. So if you don't have Cubase Pro, you can still solo your reference track and this will allow you to do a basic A-B referencing. But if you do have Cubase Pro, keep watching because this is an extremely powerful way to do A-B referencing. So let's get started. The first thing you need to do is we need to go to Studio and Audio Connections. Now, right here, you will see we have quite a few tabs. What we need to take care of first is the control room tab, right? And the first thing you need to do is activate control room. You will see there's a button here, you need to activate it. Right now I have already activated it and I'm going to show you how you can set everything up. Now, once you activate control room, you have quite a few channel types that you can create. So we have external inputs, talkback channels, cues, headphone mixes and monitor channels. Now, in this case, we only need the monitor channels and the Q sense. So as you can see, what I have here is I already have a monitor channel and this is basically my studio monitors. This is how I monitor the output from Cubase. And in this case, I'm using the AES output from my audio interface. Now, one small tip, when you do this, you also want to make sure you go to your outputs and make sure that the stereo out is not connected. Otherwise, if you have the same output here, you're going to listen to the sound twice and you don't want that. So just a little tip, make sure that you have your control room set up correctly. Now, the next thing, and this is where the magic happens, is the Q sense. And as you can see, we can have four Q sense in total. I've already created one, but I'm going to show you how to do this. So I'm going to create a Q sense. I'm going to call it reference two, and I'm going to make sure it's stereo. So I hit okay, and you can see now we have two Q sense. Now I'm going to get rid of the second one because we don't need this, but I'm going to keep the first one that I had already created, and this is my reference queue. Now, you will notice that this is not connected to anything, and this is exactly what you need. I mean, if you want, you can actually connect it to a physical output, but in this case, we want to do everything inside Cubase without any cables, without any external routing. So once we've done this, we're good to go. That's all done. Now, let's go here. As you can see, I have my mix here. So the next step is to create an audio channel. I'm going to call this AB reference. I'm going to make sure it's stereo and I'm going to add track. So as you can see, now we have our AB reference channel. Now I'm going to use this channel exclusively to AB between the different mixes. I'm going to place it on top and give it a nice color. And I'm going to copy my mix to my reference mix. So I'm going to hit Alt so I can copy. And before I leave my mouse, I'm going to hold Control or Command if you're on a Mac, and this will snap to the exact same location. So now I have two different copies of the same exact file. Here's the most important thing that you need to do. What you need to do right here is you have to open the channel settings. And this is where the clever bit is going to happen. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that this channel doesn't go to my stereo out. I don't want this to be mixed with my mastering that's going on right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my output and send it to no bus. So right now, if I play both channels, channels and I mute this one, you will see that we hear nothing. This is exactly what we want. But what we want to do is we want to send this to our AB reference 
Q. So what I'm going to do is, as you can see right here, I have the sense and the Q sense. So we need to go to my Q sense and I'm going to activate the reference Q send. I'm going to leave it at zero. I don't want to touch it. I want it to be exactly at unity level. So now let's say I want to add a little bit of processing to my mix here. So I have a frequency two EQ and I also have my quadrophase here. So let's play it and I'm going to add this processing one by one. Now let's say I want to listen to this processing in comparison with the original mix. How do we do this? And here's where control room is your friend. All I need to do is go here to my control room and I'm going to go on the control room tab. And as you can see here, we have our mix and right here we have our Q1 source. So this is our Q send. This is the reference, which this reference mix goes to. So now if I want to listen to my original mix, all I need to do is click on the C1 button here or click again and go back to my mix. So let's have a listen. So it's literally one click away and you can do this A-B comparison just by clicking on this button here. And the great thing is that if you have any insert effects on your control room, for example, you have a room correction plugin or something like this, this will be applied on both the reference mix and your mix. So that means you're comparing equal things. Now, another thing that I want to show you is that if you don't want to be opening the control room mixer all the time to do this switching here, you can actually assign this to a key command. And in this case, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do this. You go to key commands, and then in the search box, just search for source. And this is exactly what we're looking for. We're looking for select control room source. As you can see, this is exactly what this is. And I've already assigned a shortcut for this. I actually have two shortcuts for this. If you want to assign a different shortcut, for example, you might want to have this one as a shortcut. You can assign it and you hit OK and it's all assigned. So now if I click on my assign key, you will see that I can switch between the two different sources super easily. So that means that even if I don't have control room on display, I can easily switch between the two mixes. And this is a foolproof way of doing A-B comparisons inside Cubase without any third-party plugins and without any extra external routing. So there you go. That's how you can do A-B referencing in Cubase. The only thing you need really is the amazing control room. So I hope you enjoyed this video and have loads of fun. Bye-bye.